So we're going to lay our first course of bricks and blocks. It's important to get these set up correctly. So we've got the right spacing between. We will allow for 10 mil um, mortar in between the joints. These are the perpendicular joints or the perps as they're sometimes referred to. And the blocks are going to come in as well. And we'll show you how they all sort of line up in a second. So if we go over to chapter 204, and here we are, ready to go. So this is where we're going to start off. Normally a experienced bricklayer will come in and lay the corners out because it's not so easy on site to get these things uh, nicely um, 90 degrees. And then the more junior bricklayers will often come in and fill in between. So you don't have to have a load of experienced bricklayers on site. It's not always the case, um, but uh, that sometimes can happen because it's important to get these things lined up correctly. So the first brick comes in and that's going to just drop in at this intersection between these two grid lines. So that's the easy thing. And as this is going to be a facing brick exterior, it's important that we get all the spacing right for the subsequent courses. So we're going to create an array along the top of this slab. And the process for that is to use the move tool in conjunction with the control key on the Windows or the alt key on the Mac. And we'll create a copy and then we'll array that copy by entering a value and then putting in the letter X afterwards. So it's all going to be explained. Hopefully you're familiar with this process by now. I have gone through it several times before, but if you're just struggling along and attempting this one, um, good luck, but this is the process. So with the object selected, move tool selected, we need to click on it and just be careful you don't click on one of these rotation symbols. We'll be using that in a second. Uh, click on a corner. It doesn't have to be on it as long as it's moving in the red direction. That's the key bit to this. And then tap the control key on the Windows, as I said, or the Alt key on the Mac. And we need to enter the distance, which includes the perpendicular joint. So 215 is the length of the brick. 10 mil is the joint thickness or joint width. So we're looking at 225. And then hit Enter. Let's just minimize this so you can actually see what's happening. Keep an eye on this bottom corner. This is where all the values are going in. Now, because I have just clicked these things, I'm not sure whether this is going to work, but if I enter then uh, 11x, it's not going to work because this thing has not changed. So I'll just go through that process again so you can see the values. Keep an eye on this bottom corner. So I'll delete that. Select the brick go to the move tool, click on the brick, and then tap the control key, 225, enter, and then we're looking at 11, and then X, and then hit enter again. That's gonna create that array. It has to be in one fluid movement. If you do any clicking in between, like I just did, to close uh, these windows down, then it's gonna stop the command and you can't actually do it. The next bit is to put some bricks in this direction. So we can make a copy of this. Tap the control key or the command key. Rotate this round. Now, because this is a component, if we hover over the surface, any surface, we see these four red crosses. And if I click on one of those crosses, then it allows me to rotate. And again, keep an eye on the bottom corner. Make sure it says 90 degrees. And then we can move this into position endpoint to endpoint. Now we need also to move this in this direction, the green direction, 10 mil. So again, click, drag it in the green direction, 10, enter, and that's got that. We can't array that because we haven't copied it. So this time, make a copy, 225, enter, and then this time we'll go 5x, enter, and that's created our array in that direction. So that was pretty easy. That set up the first course of bricks. We'll drop back into our components, pull out the block, and the block is going to be positioned so that its inside face is running along here. So again, if I move this in like so, I want to get that, that intersection point. Now it's also important that we allow 10 mil because the other one's going to come in sort of aligned with this face. Well, we want to make sure it's sitting on this edge. 
So if I just show you what I mean by that, I'll make a copy of this. So M, and then rotate we'll this round through 90 degrees. And then position this. Now notice I've picked it up from the top, so it's trying to align to the top. So let's move it away from that. I need to pick it up from the bottom corner so I can get it into position. And then I'll track it in so it lines up with this edge. This is the important bit. So that is then forming an L. But notice there's no mortar joint between this because I positioned this right up against the corner. So again, we'll make sure we've got the right one selected. We can't push this in 10 mil because it's going to close the cavity. So we need to drag this one along 10 millimeters. So then we've got our cavity gap at that point. So now we can make some copies of this. Move tool, control key or alt key. And make sure you're on the red axis. Then we're looking at 450 this time because the block itself is 440 plus that 10 mil. So 450, enter. And then we'll go 5x. That should do us for that. Yeah, it's gone over a bit. And similarly, this side, click, tap, make sure it's 450. You can click to stop and then re-enter the value. I can keep changing these values to whatever I want until I click somewhere else. So even if you set the wrong value first time out, providing you've set the right value, then you're good to go. And then I can go 2x, and that's going to put it in. It's going to remember the last value. So this array command is very, very useful. So now we've created our first course of brick and block. In the next video, chapter 205, we can start building our stretcher bond correctly.